and I'll give you guys a quick background on sort of where I'm from uh, and what brought me to this point so that uh, I just want you to know that I'm an open book. I'm very transparent. Any questions that you have, feel free to ask and we'll start diving in. So um, I have been in the Salesforce ecosystem for uh, about 10 years now. I was a junior Salesforce administrator uh, for about a year. I then became a senior Salesforce administrator for uh, the company I started out with. And from there, I went on to Salesforce Consulting uh, as a junior consultant, uh, moved my way up to a senior consultant, and then started my own freelance consulting practice where I just have my own clients uh, and a couple of part-time people who I work with. Uh, so I really know every aspect of going from being a beginner, just trying to get your first certification, all the way into starting your own business, uh, processes and operating procedures for running your own projects with your own clients. And I can tell you about how to create long-term clients uh, yeah. or anything at all. So anything you guys wanna know, um, feel free to ask. Like I said, I'm an open book. I'm never gonna tell, you're not gonna offend me with a question. Um, so uh, thanks, Karen. Hey, Peter. Uh, welcome to the call. Uh, yeah, Karen, I see, do you provide training? I personally don't provide training for certifications. I'll say that. Um, I feel like there are plenty of people already doing certification training and they do a really good job of it. So I don't feel that I'm needed in that space. Now I'm happy to give you my advice around who to use, whether or not you should pay for training. Uh, if you're gonna pay someone, who should you pay? but I personally don't charge people for training or have a training course or anything like that because I feel like there are already people like Mike Wheeler, like Focus on Force, um, like some of the guys, uh, there's another sort of a newer blog uh, called We Learn Salesforce. Great content, great presenter there. Uh, I happen to know Peggy who runs that and she's excellent. So do I need to come in and do how to get a certification training? No, because there are already people doing that and they're doing an excellent job. So my recommendations around, if you're going for your first certification or any certification, to me, it is a cut and clear formula to get a certification. 10 years ago, when I got my first certification, there was no one building training documentation. There was no such thing as Trailhead. There were like four different certifications you could get and that was it. And you basically made your own flashcards, went through the study guide, and hope you got lucky and got the questions that were on the test. So um, nowadays, I mean, Trailhead is number one. If you are looking for not just your first certification, but any certification, Trailhead is the number one spot to do your training. Now, of course, Trailhead is not everything, but it is definitely the number one thing. If you wanna practice for the actual exam, I highly recommend Focus on Force. Uh, I know you can do, they have a free admin exam that you can do. And then you can pay, I think it's $19 and get a whole exam pack. Now, these are not test dumps. These are not questions directly from the test, but they are questions very much like what you would see on the test. So therefore they're great study material to prepare you for the exam. Focus on Force is also awesome. And also I'm not affiliated, so this is just my honest uh, recommendation. So Focus on Force is great because when you miss a question, it will tell you, it will reference documentation on how to answer that question correctly next time, why you missed it, what the right answer is. So it's a great learning guide, not just did I get it right, did I get it wrong. All right, so that would be my recommendation, would be Trailhead, focus on force to practice from the exam. If you wanna do more training, check out uh, We Learn Salesforce and check out Mike Wheeler for the actual in-depth learning of the content. And you can hop on the Facebook group um, and you can see all the comments we've had and feel free to ask. But there are a lot of people who will tell you different things. Um, and the consensus really is focus on force, Mike Wheeler, Trailhead. That really is the formula for getting a certification. All right, so I'm gonna pop down to Celine's question. Uh, I have my, and, and thank you for that question, Karen. So feel free to ask as many questions as you want. If I'm not answering exactly what you were trying to ask, then just ask again and I will get it right. All right, so Celine says, I have my certification. I'm struggling to get a job. Most employees are, are employers are looking for someone with more experience. However, my friend 
has an export import company and he just purchased Salesforce licenses. I want to offer my service for free. Let's see to help set it for him, but I'm not sure where to start from. How do I even proceed? All right. So <laughs> that's a tricky question. So let me answer the first part. Uh, I have my certification, but I'm struggling to get a job. That is a very common place to be in. And why is that a common place to be in? Because everybody wants experience, right? So if you're someone who has a certification or even two certifications, but you don't have anything on your resume, how are you going to prove to them that you're ready other than that certification? So my number one recommendation there is doing volunteer projects, which it sounds like is what you're mentioning here. But for those of you who don't have a connection that already has a business buying Salesforce licenses, you can go to a site called volunteermatch.com. And we have a video on the YouTube channel. If you're not familiar with that, maybe somebody will post a link in the comments. But we have a YouTube channel called Career Force. I post videos in the Facebook group whenever I create new ones. And we did a video a while back on how to use Volunteer Match um, to search for uh, volunteer opportunities. That is a great way to get experience for your resume. It's a great way to network. It's a great way to build a client base. Uh, because you do these volunteer projects, and I typically recommend don't do more than like a four-week engagement for a volunteer opportunity, and then put that on your resume, do a good job, use them as a reference, and now you are easing towards getting a job. So when you go apply for jobs in the future, you have on your resume, don't put that you were a volunteer, just put that you did a Salesforce implementation for company ABC. It doesn't matter. You don't have to say, I was there for a year or I was only there for four weeks. Just put that you worked for them and you did a Salesforce implementation. It shows real world experience. And if they're willing to write you a letter of recommendation or be a reference, then that's even more power. And the great thing is the nonprofit groups are pretty tight knit. So nonprofit companies know other nonprofit companies and they will recommend you if you do a good job to yes, do volunteer work, but also you can start charging those nonprofits. And a great way to move through that is do the volunteer job and do a good job and then say, hey, I did what we agreed to for this volunteer engagement and I can continue to work for you and I love working with you and I want to keep helping your company, but I'm going to have to start charging X number of dollars per hour and choose your rate, but make it a reasonable rate. Make it something that you feel that the volunteer company could probably pay. So if you're a beginner and you want to come out of the gates charging 25 bucks an hour, which is really low for Salesforce consulting, but if you want to charge that because you don't have that experience yet, you want to build it and maybe make a little money, then go ahead and charge a lower rate, $25, $35 an hour, and you can build your client base that way. So I hope that helps. Now, as far as working with your, uh, your friend who's starting their uh, Salesforce engagement and, they, and you're willing to do it for free, but where do I even start? Um, so I'm actually... And, and I promise you, I'm not here to push uh, any sort of paid program, but I do have a course coming out July 13th. Um, I'm gonna make it super cheap. So just ping me if you guys you know, are interested in it. But the goal of the course is to walk people through um, how you become a freelancer and how to structure projects as a freelancer. And what you're referring to there is a freelance project. Um, so if you ping me and I'm gonna release the course on July 13th, um, but feel free to just reach out to me and, and just, I'll meet you where you are. We can talk about how to work through it. Uh, but the, the bottom line is you need to first gather requirements. What is your friend expecting out of Salesforce? Um, and then decide how you're going to make Salesforce do that. And that could mean coming to the group and saying, Hey, I've got this friend who wants to implement Salesforce and he has these five requirements. Can you guys help me out? And I'm sure the Facebook group will help you out. And if they don't, then I'll chime in and help you out but you have to get a list of requirements. You have to design a solution around those requirements, design how Salesforce is going to solve those problems. And then you have to go implement those solutions, test it, and make sure it flows well. So there's a lot more in a Salesforce project than that, but in a nutshell, you wanna know what the requirements are, devise a plan to solve for the problems, and then build those uh, solutions into Salesforce. That's about as simple as I can bring it down in a quick conversation. Um, but I do have, like I said, I have a course coming out that would probably help. Um, but again, I don't want to push. I'm not a salesperson. I'm not going to push this on you guys. If it has value, it has value. Um, 
but trust me, I'll be the first one to tell you whether or not it's a good fit for you. So feel free to ping me if you're interested in that. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. All right. Um, all right. So let me make sure I go in order here. So I'm also currently studying for my platform app builder. Okay. That's perfect. Celine. Um, so a couple of certifications, a little bit of volunteer work, and you're going to be in a really good place to start landing some of these jobs. Now, that's not to say you can't land a job with no experience because you can, but it relies on a network. So you want to be part of the trailblazer communities. You want to be part of Facebook groups like this where you can talk to other people. Uh, you, you have to network a little bit and show people that you're serious about this. And I can tell you, when I have an opportunity to share with someone um, I bring it to the Facebook group. And I can also tell you, if you're one of those people in the Facebook group who's saying, you know, you're asking questions and you're talking about the certifications you've gotten, the problems you're having at work, I'll start to remember your name. And then for me, that's a way of networking. If I start remembering your name, and I'm sure this goes for other people, then as soon as I have like an entry level project or a nonprofit setup that I want to do, or somebody's asking for a volunteer, the first place I'm coming is the Facebook group. And the first people I'm coming to are the people that I'm recognizing their names because they're more involved. So um, that's not just for our group, that's for any group. If you're part of LinkedIn groups or trailblazer communities, no one's going to come to you because you're not really networking if you're not commenting and being part of the group. So if you can get engaged and be members of the group and try to answer questions when they come up, that's going to really raise your likelihood to uh, you know, really pull in there for uh, getting people's attention when these opportunities come up. All right. Let's see. So I'm going to go down here a little bit. All right. I want to make sure I answer everyone's questions. Celine. All right. All right. So I hope I didn't skip anyone. And if I did, um, just ask again because I'm just trying to scroll down. So I've been working as an admin for a while. This is from Peter. I just signed up for a developer bootcamp. Do you think I would be able to catch up without a program, programming background? Um, so I haven't personally done a bootcamp myself, but I've heard they move pretty quickly. So you got to be ready to, you know, hop on there, focus. It's not one of those things where, hey, I'm going to sit on this bootcamp for two hours and I'm also going to do my job on the side while I'm listening in on the bootcamp. So from what I've heard, um, you have to be ready to focus in on those boot camps. Can you catch up? Yes, absolutely. I've heard of people jumping in on the boot camps or other developer trainings, and they can sort of pick it up. The other thing is, uh, if you're not, you know, you can take that, and I'm not going to say you're going to be a developer when you come out of the boot camp. You're going to have to continue to practice on your own trailhead. You're going to have to continue to uh, develop your skills outside of the boot camp um, on your own. But Yes, you can absolutely keep up and become a developer. It does take time. You want to get your certifications to prove it to yourself um, around the development stuff. So hopefully that helps. I know it's not a direct answer, but yeah, just be ready on the boot camps to, to focus in and give 100% attention while you're there in the boot camp. All right. So I don't have any specific questions right now. I think I got, I feel like there was another one. Okay, so I see Tanya. Uh, I'm going back here. So I'm a Salesforce consultant and I would like to be a technical architect. How do I move towards this path? So a technical architect for, for those of you who don't know, Hey Kat. Um, so I'm reading your one more post here, Tanya. So you said how to transition to technical architect or join the product team of Salesforce. All right. So you're a Salesforce consultant now. Can you give me a little information about what is your role as a Salesforce consultant? What certifications do you have? Um, how much experience do you have? Um, and I'll go ahead and start talking a little bit about what a technical architect is. So a technical architect is like the upper echelon of Salesforce professionals in general. Um, to get to be a technical architect, you're probably going to need, I would say five plus years of consulting experience at a minimum. Uh, to be a true technical architect. And that's not just any Salesforce consulting. You're going to need to have done a variety of engagements, but specifically you're going to need to have done a lot of development work for a lot of different types of solutions. Um, and you're going to need to understand sort of how to run projects, how to run project teams, uh, and the ins and outs of everything about Salesforce. So the ins and outs of the security model, Apex sharing, um, all types of, you know, like classes, visual force pages, APIs, um, integrations, things like that. 
Uh, technical architect is not something you just go take the exam and you're going to be good to go. And that's why there are so many prerequisites leading up to the technical architect uh, certification. Um, so how do you become one? It's really experience and not just experience, but making sure you're putting yourself in challenging projects in challenging situations so that you can grow as a professional. All right, great. So that's all the questions I'm seeing right now. Uh, I, I see right now you're doing field service lightning implementations, six years experience, end-to-end -end project for field service lightning. So if you're trying to be a technical architect, that's a solid role to go. I mean, if that's what you want to do, then by all means go that way. Um, if I were in your shoes, I would probably just paint myself as a field service lightning expert and let that be your niche. And then market yourself if you're if you're just looking at ramping up income um then i would just market yourself as a freelancer as a field service lightning expert and do subcontracts for consulting firms because they're they're likely hurting for the specifics like they're probably hurting for field service lightning professionals marketing cloud professionals cpq professionals so if you can find your niche and it sounds like you already have i would subcontract start finding your own clients and you could probably charge, you know, $200 an hour for just being a field service lightning expert on projects. Um, and I mean, if you want to make more than $200 an hour, then I don't know where you're going to find that. Um, so if your goal of becoming a technical architect is to make more money, I don't think you need to become a technical architect. I think you need to feed that field service lightning specialty that you're already in, and you can make just as much money at that level. Um, and to connect with firms, uh, yeah, and then we're going to move on. But to connect with firms, hop on the App Exchange. Uh, it's kind of funny, a lot of people don't know this, but if you get on the App Exchange, you can actually search Salesforce partners on the App Exchange. This is going to give you a list of all of the Salesforce uh, related, I'm trying to think how to say it, it's, it's their partners. It's all of the consulting companies that are partners of Salesforce. And therefore, those are the people that Salesforce is sending the work to. Uh, so when they have a field service lightning project come up, Salesforce sells it, they send it to their partners to implement it. And those partners, uh, you want to go to the app exchange, find the partners. Um, and then you want to start finding them on LinkedIn, contacting them directly and letting them know that you're open to subcontracting opportunities specifically for field service lightning. And I guarantee if you reach out to five or 10 of those consulting partners, you are going to start getting bites pretty quickly, especially. Uh, if you, you have a few, you know, you have six years under your belt plus FSL uh, experience. Um, did try to get the list from App Exchange. Uh, yeah, you don't have to get, uh, just send me a PM, Tanya, about the uh, App Exchange stuff, and I'll send you a list of all the Salesforce partners. Um, you don't have to request one. They're, it's all public information. Um, okay, so I'm going to move forward into, we're going to sort of pull back because I want to make sure that we get uh, information to the beginner groups as well as everyone. So that was sort of a very specific around field service lightning, how to target yourself as a consultant. Um, so pulling back a little bit, uh, continue to put questions in the comments, guys. So when you're starting out, we talked earlier on the call about um, to get your admin certification or any other, you know, first certification, the formula, as simply as I can put it in my opinion, is trailhead, uh, study on Trailhead, follow the certification guides, use Focus on Force to practice for exams, uh, and then you can use Mike Wheeler if you need a little more hands-on training. Uh, other than that, there are plenty of places you can get free training like Quizlet uh, for flashcards for the test and things like that. But Trailhead, Focus on Force, um, and if you want to pay for something, Mike Wheeler, uh, and you should be go to, good to go from a training perspective. All right. Let's see. Uh, so we're going to go, uh, I'll, I'll move into sort of a next step. So that's how you get a certification in a nutshell. Now, moving from that, a lot of people struggle at the next step, which is I've got certifications. I'm trying to land my first job. Um, if you're looking to do that, the, the basic formula is get on Volunteer Match's website, apply for volunteer opportunities, talk to other people in the Facebook group. I've mentioned this before, but I haven't seen it happen. Um, Talk to other people in the Facebook group. It's smart for, if you can tag team a volunteer opportunity with someone else, that can take the responsibility and burden off of you as an individual. So if you wanna get with another beginner, you know, a couple of you guys who have certifications, but you haven't landed your first job yet, 
if you could create a group within the group that is basically, hey, we're certified, we're looking to do volunteer work, and you could work those volunteer opportunities as teams and build off of each other, I think that could be a great formula for a lot of people building a resume at the same time using one volunteer opportunity and helping each other grow and learning how to be teams. All right, so the, the next thing is, so when you move into landing your first job, a lot of questions that people have or are, how do I nail an interview? So I'll say my number one tip, and we talked about this on the live Q&A, and I actually talked to one of our members. We have a video going live in mid-July where I interviewed one of our members who has had a lot of success getting interviews during the pandemic, and that's huge. So I asked him what he did to get there. Now, he didn't want me to post anything live until he's at the new job that he accepted. Um, so that he doesn't burn a bridge with his current employers. But uh, I'll tell you what tips he used um, to nail these interviews. And uh, I'll say the number one tip is do your research. And a lot of people talk about doing your research. And it's, hey, make sure you know what the company sells and make sure you know about how big they are and what they do and all this kind of stuff. And that's great if you want to do your research like that. And that's important to do your research like that. But when you're talking about landing a specialized Salesforce position, the company, yeah, they definitely want you to know what they do, but they also want to know that you can take it to the next level. So when you're looking at a professional position at a company, you have to go forward and think about what they're looking for. You're the Salesforce pro. So what you wanna do for these interviews is prepare by going to their website and filling out their forms, like our contact us page. Pretend to be a potential customer and fill out the, you know, they'll have like a, are you interested in us? Yes. Why are you interested? Give me your first name, last name, email address, um, and fill those forms out on their site. What's gonna happen is you should get an auto response email that says something like, uh, thanks for reaching out, we'll be in contact with you within 24 hours. So the thing is, you, you end up in this position where you are showing them their process in the interview. So I would document their entire process, fill out the form, see if you get an automatic response. If you don't get an automatic response, you should mark that. See if they actually call you. If they never call you, that's a huge red flag for the company because they're missing customers. If they do call you, how long does it take? If it's an hour, great process. If it's three days, horrible process. And you wanna document all of these pieces so that when you show up for the interview and you get that opportunity to say, to like highlight yourself and show what you can do, you can say, um, you know, what I think I can do for this company is evident by, I actually, you know, put myself into your system as a potential customer. I never got an auto response email. No one followed up with me. I got a call three days later and they, you know, by that time I could have been off to another company buying their product. So I think I can make a lot of improvements in your lead generation and sales process to better the company and have a quicker turnaround time through some standard out of the box free stuff that you're already paying for through Salesforce. And when someone hears something like that in an interview, it's incredible. So you basically get to enter right in, you're gonna leave them with this, you know, lasting, you know, impression that you've made where they're going, hey, all these other guys sounded really good and all these other guys had three or four years experience. But that one guy that came in, he dominated it. And he told us about himself, but he also tell, told us about ourselves and how he can make our company better and get us more sales and actually implement process improvement. And if you can come out of an interview with that sort of you know heavy hit, they're not gonna forget you. All right. Let's see, I wanna make sure, I know I talked a little bit about that. So that's really just moving through a quick overview process of how do I get certified? How do I get experience? What, what quick tips can I do in interviews to land jobs? Um, and so that those are sort of the entry level things you wanna be doing to make sure you're landing jobs. So I'm gonna go back through the uh, questions here. It looks like some of you guys are sort of answering questions within the comments and that's perfect. Uh, let's see, developer certification. Right. Anything for app builder and sales cloud consultant. Okay. 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 All right. So it sounds like you guys have some good stuff going on. Yeah. Um, 
Justin is a seasoned Salesforce professional. So the stuff that he recommends, I'm, I'm sure it is spot on. So yeah, some of those situationals that you might want to talk through as far as um, what you can build out as like a practice situation to try to build those in your org. That's awesome. If you want to practice specifics, those are great resume builders too, because you can come into interviews talking about the specific solutions that you solve for. You don't have to say it was for fun in my own org. You can say, I built a solution that solved a problem for this specific requirement, and I can do similar things for you too. Um, and volunteer opportunities are a great way to build a resume stack of real world situations and real world improvements for real companies. All right. All right, so Karen asks, she sees that things are a little bit uh, saturated as far as administrator certifications go. Yes, it is. Uh, the administrator certification is getting a bit saturated. There's a few reasons for that. Um, Salesforce dumps are really popular. And I know every time somebody says, hey, I've got a Salesforce dump, everybody jumps on them and says, hey, that's not allowed. You can't do that. You'll get your certifications revoked. And I promise you, twice as many of us who are saying, hey, that's not allowed, there are twice as many people personal messaging that person and paying for certification dumps. So the admin certification is definitely getting watered down a bit. And so you have to be able to interview well also, and you want to do these volunteer projects to separate yourself. Um, going directly into the developer route, yeah, absolutely. You can go the developer route, but don't go the developer route just because the admin certification is watered down because the, de the developer route as a professional is totally different than being an administrator. If you're a developer, you are sitting <clears throat> behind the scenes working on code projects and you don't really engage much with. So if you're a person to person, like you like talking to people, you like solving problems, um, the developer route is a little bit more behind the scenes, way back in the weeds. Um, and the one thing about developers is that you can, you can mess up a lot of things very quickly. So you have to know what you're doing. Number two, you'll notice things like, uh, clients will expect developers to be able to do anything like as an admin, you can put yourself in a box and you can say, Oh, you can't do that with, process builders or flows. Um, so you're gonna have to go talk to a developer now. So that might sound a little interesting, but the cool part about that is as an admin, you don't have to do anything and everything that a client asks for. If they tell you to integrate some other system with Salesforce and they want all these customizations around it. And also they want it to, uh, you know, send API calls out to three other databases and all this stuff. As an admin, you can go, I'm good, like I can't do all that stuff. It's not native to Salesforce. You're gonna have to talk to a developer. Um, and you sort of get to box yourself in so that you're not constantly having to break your neck to make a solution happen for a client um, where an administrator has the ability to say, oh, we need to pass this over to a developer. Does that make a developer more in demand? Absolutely. I guess what I'm trying to point out is that being an administrator and being a developer are two very different things. And the development route can be much more uh, complex and much more expectations for you, where an administrator has things a little bit easier, in my opinion. Um, and that doesn't mean like an admin for a company. That means going from admin um, all the way to advanced administrator, to being a solution architect at consulting firms, uh, to having your own freelance consulting company. Because the thing about being a developer is that you're never going to be able to freelance if you only know how to develop. Because as a freelancer, you have to know the full suite of Salesforce. Um, so that means you have to be a good administrator and a good developer to be a developer by yourself because no one's ever gonna ask you to just do custom development work as a freelancer. Usually you're gonna be on a project team where you're the developer on the team. Whereas with an administrator, you can sort of say, hey, I can do all of these things because I know Salesforce in a nutshell, but when it comes to some of these other development tasks, we may have to outsource that to someone else. Um, so I know that's really long-winded, uh, but I just wanna point out that going developer route instead of admin route because one's a little watered down, um, that's not a clear-cut choice. You need to differentiate yourself in other ways. If you wanna be a developer, go that way. Um, if you don't wanna be a developer, I would not go that route unless you're seriously interested 
and writing code and working behind the scenes, um, you know, for the extent of your career, uh, or at least until you're ready to move on into something else. All right, so. All right, so we've got a question here. Hey, I will start working for a consulting firm startup. How should I move ahead? Um, so are you asking that you are actually um, starting your own consulting firm or you're starting to work for a consulting company that's just getting uh, like started with its clients? Um, so I'll let you answer that and then I'll jump in on uh, specific answers around how you can move forward and put yourself ahead of the, ahead of the pack as a new consultant. Um, so I don't see any new questions, so I'm going to pop back to sort of the process we were working through. And so we went through how to get your certification, how to build experience, how to land your first job, uh, a few quick tips on interviewing. And so now I want to talk about how to level up your career after you're already in it. So for instance, you're already uh, a W2 worker at a company and you're ready to level up. You're already a consultant at a consulting firm but you're ready to take your next step. So what do you do? Like a lot of people work for these W-2 jobs. Um, and I hope that makes sense to everyone. Like W-2, I just mean you're an employee at a company um, working full time. So, so you're working these jobs and from there, where do you go? How do you level up? So a lot of people who work full time for an employer will do some side contracting um, with some clients of their own outside of their main job. Um, so you have to create, get your own clients, go out and network and find your own clients. And then you have to be willing to put in the extra hours to get their projects done while you get your project done, uh, or sorry, your main job done at work. So a lot of people go that route to get more experience, become a, board, a more dynamic professional and make a lot more money um, on the side. The other thing you can do as a consultant, you can do that exact same thing. Um, but if you already work for a consulting company, one of the cool ways to level up is to really get your project documentation and processes keyed in. So if you can get really good at like uh, building statements of work, get really good at building design documents, um, get really good at uh, prepping admin training and end user training sessions, developing user acceptance testing documentation. If you can get all of those things like really lined out, then you can, even as a consultant working at a firm, you can jump into a project and finish it in like two weeks and move on to the next project. And that allows you to level up because a lot of the consultants get paid uh, based on you know the number of hours they're working. So if you have a project that say it's, they've allocated 100 hours to it, then, and you finish it in two weeks, but it only took you 50 hours because you had all your ducks in a row with all of your documentation in place, you can dive forward through that project in two weeks, knock out 100 hours worth of work, get your next project. And the cool thing about that is most consultants get paid bonuses on uh, how much utilization they have. So if you're getting a lot of projects done quickly and you're doing a good job, they're gonna give you more projects. Um, you're gonna get them done just as quickly because you've got your processes in place and then you're gonna level up your income very quickly. Because when I was a consultant in my first consulting job, I made $70,000 a year. And because of bonuses and getting my projects done quickly, I made $110,000 a year. So I almost made, you know, I made over 50% more income just because of dominating projects and getting them done right, happy clients, getting them done quickly. So you can dive through that really quickly. Um, if you're interested in getting those processes aligned, again, um, I'm not here to push. I've got a course coming out on July 13th, but that's not what I'm here for. But that course is actually how to do everything from proposals to non-disclosure agreements um, to end user admin training documentation, uh, doing things like design documents, uh, requirement sessions with the clients, everything you need to go from start to finish. And I'm honestly try not trying to make a ton of money off of it. Um, I'm just, I just wanna give it to people who are ready for it. So if you're a beginner, this is not for you. You don't need it. If you don't have your first certification, this is not for you. If you're looking to be a freelancer, or you already work for a consulting firm, or you're thinking about doing some contracts on the side, this is for you. This is definitely for you. And I'm happy to give you some snapshots, um, show you what some of the templates look like. Uh, but basically what it is, is I've got, I've got a couple of templates that are ready to use for every single phase of the project. All you have to do is jump in, 
and everything's highlighted yellow. So all you have to do is it's like paste your logo here, um, enter your company name here, enter your client's first requirement here, and it just it dummy walks you through every single step of an entire Salesforce project. So that if you're one of those people who are scared of, you know, I want to do some freelance consulting on the side, but I'm not sure I know what I'm doing enough to do this thing. You're, you're problem solved. You're good to go. We've got this in place. Plus you can always come ask me questions. I'm always on the Salesforce Facebook group. So if you just hit the group and say, Hey Brad, I'm working through one of your templates and I don't quite know what to do. No problem. I'll come bail you out. Um, so anyway, the point of it is I make plenty of money on my own. Um, I think most of you guys know the story. Like I work part time. Um, like this year I'm on track to make like 180 K. So I don't, I'm not trying to sell a course as a way to like make a bunch of money. I'm actually trying to give you guys something that's beneficial. But the problem is if I give it away for free, people are just going to grab it then because they have no, you know, vested interest in it, they're not going to use it. They're just going to put it by the wayside, forget to use it, move on with their day because they got busy. Um, so I think there has to be, there's some psychology there where you need to have some type of investment in order to make you want to go utilize the product. And I think utilizing it is the, is the biggest thing. Um, so yeah, like Celine said, uh, if you're scared of moving forward as a freelancer or a contractor or starting your own consulting company, um, just PM me and, and I'm not going to try to sell you anything. I, I promise I'm not going to like push it on you. I'll give you more information about what it's about. Um, it comes out on July 13th. I'll have everything ready. We've got a few people testing it right now. Um, and you know, we, we can just have an honest conversation about it. That's it. Um, all right. So how do you become a Salesforce partner? Is there a criteria? Um, so that's a good question. Uh, so when you get to when you get to this point where you're talking about whether or not you want to be a Salesforce partner, I like to cover this topic first. It's that you don't have to be a Salesforce partner to start your own firm, to be a freelance consultant or contractor. Um, a lot of people, and, it, and it's odd to me, but it's because I've been in the Salesforce world uh, for so long that it, it never occurred to me that people think you have to be a partner to do Salesforce contracts and you don't. Um, you can source your own work, you can network into your own projects. If I told everyone on this call right now, hey, I've got a project for you and I need you to implement it, you are all qualified to come work for me from the Salesforce perspective. They're not stopping you, they want you to come implement. Now, the benefit of being a partner, um, so I just wanna make sure you don't have to be a partner, you can do anything a partner can do on your own. However, the benefit of being a partner is that Salesforce will source you projects. So if I'm a Salesforce salesman and I just sold a deal and I'm like, all right, I just sold this deal. Um, they bought 20 Salesforce licenses. I need someone to implement this project. I'm gonna go to my partners, my Salesforce partners, and I'm gonna say, hey, you're one of my preferred partners. I'm gonna give this deal over to maybe five different partners so they can quote it to my client. And you go through the sales process, you have them the, the meetings, you quote a price, and then you, you give them your proposal, they review it, they negotiate, and then you go do the project, right? So that's the benefit to being a partner is that you don't have to go drum up work for yourself. The partner theoretically is going to give, Salesforce is going to be giving you potential clients, and then you have to be able to work them and sell your services. Um, so that's how that works. Now there is a buy-in. I can't remember what it is. I think it's like a thousand bucks, something like that to become a partner, to like fill out the documentation and the application to become a partner. Now, a lot of people don't know this, that there are partner ratings. So there's like silver partners, gold partners, platinum partners. Well, how do you become, you know, different levels of partners? Because you're going to start at the very bottom and your, your partner, there's a few different things. And I'm sure somebody like, you know, like Dustin, who knows about this stuff can chime in, but, um, there are criteria to your partner rating. One of those is how many certifications your employees have. So for instance, I have six certifications, so I get the partner score up a little bit, but if I have 10 employees who each have six certifications, now we're boom, 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 we're going up and we're probably going to be a silver or gold partner pretty quickly because we're layering certifications in and that helps my partner score. 
The other way is customer feedback. Um, so customers have to fill out surveys at the end of a project for partners. And when they fill out those surveys, if you're getting really good feedback, then that levels you up as well. Um, also, if you're referring new clients to Salesforce, that gives you a huge partner score boost um, if, you're if you're referring them new clients. Um, so there's a few things that go into that, but a lot of people think they have to be a partner to be a Salesforce contractor or consultant. And the thing is, when you get into being a Salesforce partner, that doesn't make it an easy ride. You still have to battle, fight, get your certifications, hire a couple of employees to level yourself up um, to being a great partner. Um, and I'll mention one more thing. You're absolutely welcome. Um, I'll mention one more thing is that there are politics, like with any big corporation inside of Salesforce, there are politics. And I know we all love Salesforce and we don't want to believe it, but there are these little games that go on where your Salesforce, you know, Salesforce will source you work as a partner and you might not be qualified to do the project that they're asking you to propose, but you have to propose it. Like you have to go in and do it because if you're a no person and you're sitting there saying, no, I don't know how to do marketing cloud. No, I don't know how to do CPQ. They're going to stop giving you referrals. Um, and then you kind of lose the whole benefit of being a partner. So I just want to point that out. Um, yeah, and I, I appreciate that, Karen. Yeah, we don't value things we get for free. I, I know some people do, like you value things that you get for free, but most people need to pay for something in order to value it. Um, I totally agree. Uh, all right. So, all right, so I'll move forward. So we were just talking about, and feel free to ask questions and I'll keep talking uh, about the next step in the process. I'll go on for about 10 minutes here. Um, I will stay on as long as you guys are asking questions, um, but otherwise I'll just talk through this process. Uh, so to level up, as we were talking about, um, you have to get those processes in place. And then I gave myself a free pitch while we talked about that. So um, moving forward from that, you move into, when you get into freelance consulting and you get into these consulting firms, um, that's where you get the freedom that Salesforce brings. And if you came here from Choose FI or any of the financial independence you know, uh, sources, then you've heard me talk about not just the money that Salesforce brings, but the freedom that Salesforce brings. Um, for instance, I, and this is not to tout myself because what I want to do is tell you about me and tell you that it is absolutely repeatable and you can do this too. Um, and I am an open book, just ask me how to do it and I will give you everything I can to make this happen for you. But it's not easy, there's hard work involved, but you can earn a very free lifestyle with very good income. Um, and again, I don't really have anything to sell. Like I said, just send me a message or post on the Facebook group and I will tell you everything I know. So I've worked from home, I've worked from home for the last seven years fully, don't go to client sites, don't go into an office. Um, one of my clients gives me full benefits, so I don't even have to pay for uh, healthcare or 401ks or anything like that outside of the business. So I developed that with a client where they pay me full time, or uh, sorry, give me full time benefits. Um, and then the rest of my clients are all what I call a managed services agreement. So they pay me for 30 hours a month or 40 hours a month, whatever I've agreed to with them. Um, and whether or not I work 30 hours, they still pay me for 30 hours. Um, that's what a managed services agreement is, is where they, they have me on retainer for a certain amount of hours. And if I work 40 hours and it's a 30 hour agreement, they have to pay overages. If I work 20 hours and it's a 30 hour agreement, they have to pay 30 anyway. So it's a win-win. Um, and it's up to the client to make sure they utilize their 30 hours, but otherwise it is just a set amount that they pay um, to have me available to them as an administrator. So again, they only have to pay for like 30, 40 hours a month, but when you're charging consulting rates and you're talking about 40 hours a month, that's 10 hours a week, and you charge $150 an hour, that's like $6,000 a month for 10 hours a week. That's $72,000 a year for 10 hours a week. If you get a couple of those, the math is easy. Now you have you know, two 40 hour managed services agreements that has you working 20 hours a week if they utilize all of their hours, 20 hours a week. And at that point, you're making about $150,000 a year. So the math is very simple to make this work. So I don't want it to look like this is like fake or you can't do it. Um, you absolutely can do it. But first, you know, if you don't have an admin certification, this isn't happening tomorrow. Um, 
I shouldn't say admin, I should say if you don't have your certification, this is going to take, you know, two or three years to get there. And a lot of people will contest that two or three years is nothing. Like if you're talking about going from just living paycheck to paycheck and paying your bills to working 20 hours a week and making 150K a year, and that only takes three years to go from beginning to end, that should be a path that most people are interested in. And I'm not saying it's easy and I'm not saying that this is gonna happen overnight, but if you put in two to three years of effort and you join in on groups like this and you join in on the live Q and A's and you ask people questions and you network and you get it done, it's absolutely doable. Um, and if you work, if you want to keep working 40 hours a week, then do that too. And you can make two or 300 grand a year. So, um, really the sky's the limit and it, it's totally up for you. Um, so Amit says, I've just cleared the admin exam. I have knowledge, completed six super badges, just nervous about applying real jobs that I don't have experience. Can I try for becoming a freelancer or should I take some experience first? Um, so, uh, that, that's a tough one. I would definitely try for experience first. I'll say that. Um, you should definitely do volunteer work to uh, sharpen your skills and polish your knowledge and get confident. Uh, at the same time, I would go ahead and start applying for jobs. The super badges are great. The certification is awesome. Keep working on your second certification, whether that's developer, platform app builder, whatever it is, keep moving forward towards your next certification. Um, if you are gung ho on becoming a freelancer, uh, you're going to, again, I don't want to push my course, but just talk to me about that. If you're gung ho on becoming a freelancer, you're going to need a process and documentation. Otherwise you're just going to get your first freelance gig and you're just going to fail miserably. And I don't want to say that in like a negative way. These projects are really involved. You need to know what you're doing without a process in place you're just gonna hit a wall really quickly and just end up with a really mad client. Um, and that's the last thing you wanna do. So if you decide you don't wanna do the volunteer work and apply for regular jobs, and you definitely wanna be a freelancer first, um, just reach out reach out to me and we can talk a little bit about getting that process in place. Um, all right, so Kristen says, have you ever been in a situation where you were given a project that you had limited knowledge on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's what consulting firms do to you. So. If you go work for a consulting firm, what they do is they call you the expert on everything. Because when they sit you down in front of a client, all they're gonna say is, hi, this is Bradley Rice. And they know I've got a year experience and an admin certification. And they're gonna say, hi, this is Bradley. He is your Pardot expert. And it's like, whoa, what just happened? And I literally had that happen to me. Um, I didn't know what Pardot was at the time. I sort of knew what it did, but not really. And I got put on a project where I was the part out implementation person. Um, it's, it's tough. It's, it's really stressful, but that's why consultants get paid so well. Um, and what you do is you have to, I say, gather the requirements like you know what you're talking about and just let them tell you what they want and how it should work and nod your head and say, yeah, and it's awkward. And don't get me wrong, it's awkward. Um, and half the time the clients are gonna know but that's not your problem. Your consulting company painted you a certain way and all you can do is be honest and transparent with your manager. Like don't go gripe and say, it's too hard, I don't know what to do. Just go to them and say, hey, I feel like I'm a little bit over my head. Is there someone else at, the at this company who can you know, back me up on this project? I'm happy to take the lead, but can I have like a fallback plan just in case you know, I get stuck in a rut or something like that? Um, and they will absolutely help you because they want a happy client too. Um, but ask the questions, do your best to figure everything out. Um, I would say as a consultant, you have to be growing. So if they put you on something like a CPQ project, then the best thing you can do is take those requirements, listen the best you can, talk to the other members on the project, go home, stay up all night on trailhead, learn as much about CPQ as you can, watch YouTube videos, try to talk to other people. You'll figure it out. Um, I've never seen a consulting company fire someone who was honest when they came on board. So if you come on board and you say, hey, I'm a CPQ expert, and then they put you on a CPQ project and you can't do it, you might get fired. But if you say, hey, I don't know CPQ, but I'm willing to learn, and they put you on a CPQ project, then, and you say, hey, I'm scrambling a little bit, I'm trying to figure this thing out, but I need backup, they will respect that. You're never gonna get fired uh, as long as you were honest in your interview and you're being honest with them as you go through the projects. The worst thing you can do 
is sit on projects where you don't know what you're doing and don't raise your and, and you don't raise your hand and you just try to figure it out and you end up bombing the project. I still don't think you're going to get fired, but it looks bad and it's and it feels bad. It's hard to deal with. So um, just be the first one to raise your hand and say, hey, I feel like I'm a little bit in over my head. What do you guys recommend? And a lot of managers will respect people who come and they say, hey, look, you're my manager. I respect you. I'm looking for your advice on how to move forward with this project because I want to do the right thing for the client and the firm um, and just go that direction. Um, all right. So I see a few people. Um, I see one question that's asking, uh, how do I get a job? I have an admin certificate. The short answer to that is do volunteer work. Um, then the next question, of course, is how do I do volunteer work? Um, and thank you for replying right there, Karen. So uh, it's Volunteer Match. And we have a video on the YouTube channel about how to search on Volunteer Match and do those kind of things. But uh, go to Volunteer Match, look for Salesforce opportunities, um, get hooked up with a volunteer opportunity. Like I said, hop on the group and try to tag team a volunteer opportunity with some other members. Um, you can grow together, you can learn together, learn to work on project teams together, and both of you get to build your resume for the same project. So it's a win-win. Um, all right, so coming back to this question, sorry. Uh, hey, Brad, I will work for a consulting firm, but I don't have any certifications. How should I work on certifications and experience? Um, do I learn and move on as well? You do wanna learn and you wanna be scrappy and you wanna move on um, and just keep moving forward. Uh, I would ask the company if they have a, a project, uh, like project documentation and processes in place um, that you can follow to go from the beginning of the project to the end of the project, and that will help guide you. <laughs> I see Celine's question. Um, yeah, I would question that too. I would say this is uh, probably a very large consulting company um, where Naranhan is not going to be directly interfacing with clients and probably just doing project work after someone else has built the requirements out and those kind of things. Um, so I don't know that for a fact, but I would imagine it's something like that where you're not interfacing with the clients and it's probably a larger consulting firm outsourcing work to a consulting firm for a better price. Um, but yes, all you want to do is learn as much as you can, keep working on the trailheads, um, get your certifications and that might be a good fit if you want to reach out to me about the process documentation. But um, I would ask your peers, if there are other people who are working for that consulting company too, ask them how they're feeling, what they're doing, how they've gotten, how they've been successful working for this company who hires like super duper newbies. Um, I know that's like a really weird way to say that. That, that sounded weird when it came out. But anyway, um, people who are hiring like really fresh people to Salesforce, um, I would talk to someone else who started out that same way and see how they've seen success. Uh, but you are going to have to, uh, you know, be scrappy, adjust quickly, um, and just use your networks, use groups like our Salesforce group to, you know, help you through that process. But um, congratulations on getting the job. Um, but yeah, you're gonna have to work hard to push through uh, without having a certification. Um, volunteer match postings, ignore the three to five years experience thing. Um, people, people put stuff like that on there. Um, I don't know why they think they can get somebody with five years experience who wants to come hold their hand. They might find it every now and then. Uh, but I would reach out to them if it looks like that volunteer opportunity is a good fit for you and you know what you're doing, then just go ahead and reach out and see if they'll, uh, hop on an interview with you, um, to, and, and they want to vet you out before they put you in their org. Like, do they want someone with three to five years experience? Yes, but what they really want is someone they can trust and someone that knows what they're doing. Um, so Boris says, hey Brad, interesting info. I got a job as a Salesforce developer in the company where I used to be a C-sharp developer. So I am in a good position to learn. My goal is to build my own consulting. So I need mentorship on steps I need to do. Um, so Boris, are you talking about starting your own consulting firm from the ground up? And my next question would be, um, what country, well, actually my question is, are you based in the United States or somewhere else? Um, and the reason I ask what country you're based in is because I really only know about starting a consulting company in the United States. So I don't want to give you like advice around, uh, specifics other than how to do Salesforce projects and move forward there. 
Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what we're, what I'll need to know before I can advise you there. But if you're in the United States and you want, you want to start a consulting company, it's as easy as start an LLC, Google, uh, like your state, like if you live in Florida, say how to start an LLC in Florida, um, start an LLC as a tech company. Um, there's a few steps you can reach out to me if you want. Um, but simple things, keep up with your expenses. You need to have a profit loss statement. Um, you need to have non-disclosure agreements with your clients. Uh, you need to have signed statements of work. You need to have uh, signed design documents where they're signing off on things. Um, but the number one thing is make sure you have that LLC in place. Uh, otherwise, you don't wanna make one data mistake um, and accidentally do something like wipe out a company's customer base and they didn't have it backed up and now they're trying to sue you. Um, so the worst thing you can do is not protect yourself and an LLC protects you from a situation like that. Um, all right, Dallas, Texas, perfect. Um, so yeah, so I was just running through the quick steps, Google how to start an LLC in Texas. Um, it, it can be a sole proprietorship. If you already have a business in place, you can do whatever you want. Um, this is if you wanna do individual consulting. Uh, if you want to uh, actually start a consulting company and have full-time employees, then you might need to move into um, maybe an actual S Corp or something like that. Uh, if you're looking at just hiring contractors and paying them hourly, um, then you're, you're fine with just an LLC um, or a sole proprietorship as long as you're the only actual employee. Um, so, so yeah, to actually, and let me go back to your original question. Um, yeah, you, you are in a great place uh, to, to learn this stuff and move into being Salesforce developer very quickly. Um, if you're gonna build your own, you gotta start the LLC and then you gotta start working on a client base. Um, there are a few different ways to start working on a client base. A lot of people start by subcontracting with consulting firms, um, doing a few volunteer projects on Volunteer Match to develop a network. Um, other than that, you can actually look on like LinkedIn jobs for people hiring for a Salesforce professional and just reach out to them and say, hey, I'm actually you know, a freelance contractor and I would like to try to earn your business. Do you have time for a call? Um, and try to find a way to edge into those opportunities where they're not looking for a consultant, but if you can show them why a consultant is a better uh, fit for them than a full-time employee, then you might be able to wedge your way in uh, with people with Salesforce job postings and being a consultant for them. Uh, so, so that's really it, but I mean, uh, there are other aspects of running your own business, um, but I would say if you do start your own business, Again, I'm not trying to push the course, but just, just PM me about the, um, the process documentation that I have. Uh, you may already know all about these processes and processes and how to do non-disclosure agreements and how to track your time and how to do project plans and project tracking and design documents. You may already know how to do all that stuff. Um, but I can tell you for, you know, for a few bucks um, to save yourself the time, I can just give it all to you. So um, PM me if you're interested. All right, so is there a, so Francisco says, is there a specific kind of project you really like or a specific process in a project? Um, yeah, th th there definitely are. Um, so my favorite kind of full on project is definitely just keeping it simple because it's what I'm good at. So if you're doing a, like a, sell, a Salesforce sales cloud implementation, um, maybe with a service cloud implementation with it, like those are so easy and, and it's only because you've already done it. You know, I've already done probably a hundred of these projects. Um, so coming into that, you can blow clients out of the water with some simple things like, let me show you how to set up lead queues and automated lead assignment rules. And let me show you how to build stages and probabilities so that now we can forecast revenue for the future. Um, let me show you how to do some quick reporting on uh, how well, you know, different lead sources are doing, or you converting leads. And it's just so much fun because clients come in and they're like scared. And this is the first time they've used Salesforce and they're looking for somebody to lean on. And you come in and just like knock it out of the park. And it is so fun to do projects like that um, because then the clients love you um, and you get to do a fun project and make good money while you're doing it. So yeah, definitely like really basic stuff. Um, I will take, I will happily personally, I will happily take a 30 hour sales cloud implementation over a 300 hour monster project that you never know what's going to happen. Um, 
I would rather do 10 30 hour projects way before I do one 300 hour project. And I know that's counterintuitive for a lot of people, but I love those clients where I can come in, knock it out, quick win, everybody's happy, you build a network, um, move on to the next one. Because what if you hate that client? And, and I, I shouldn't say that, but you just don't mesh well with them. The project's not fun. They don't know what they're talking about. And then what if you had a project like that for 300 hours? That would be horrible. Where if it's a 30 hour project, you can push through it, you can get it done, and you can move on to the next one. So I love uh, smaller projects with a more contained uh, statement of work or a, a more contained scope. All right, and let's see, specific process in the project. Um, I like getting in there and building it. Like the hard part for me is like documenting everything and making sure we have our ducks in a row. It's very important to document everything um, for the success of the project. But as far as what's fun, I love taking the design document and making it come to life in Salesforce. Um, and then doing that first demo where I know I nailed it and they're gonna get on here and be like, whoa, you did all that in two weeks. And um, so it's just a lot of fun to, to build something that you're confident in building and then demo it to somebody and, and just sort of knock them out. Um, so, so that's a lot of fun. All right, so Boris said, let's connect. Uh, very specialized CPQ integrations, how to attract clients. All right. Um, okay, yep, so I'll send you a PM after the uh, the live Q&A, Boris. I appreciate that. Um, so that really, I mean, I think we're close on time. Yeah, we're over on time. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I hope I answered everyone's questions. If I didn't, um, I really do apologize. So uh, feel free to PM me if you have any questions. Definitely get on the Facebook group and ask questions that you have. Hop on Volunteer Match if you're looking for some experience. Um, and just feel free to ask me anything, everything. Like I mentioned, I'm an open book. I'm happy to help. Um, and I'll definitely be bringing more information about the course as it's ready. So we're looking for July 13th. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel um, and you like the information that we're sharing and you're getting value out of this, just hop over there and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Um, that way you get updates when we release new videos. We try to do that about once a week. Um, and we're excited to keep working with you guys through this journey. So uh, good luck, get those certifications, land the jobs, and uh, I'll talk to everybody soon. Thanks.